A sample of the RF output from the UHF amplifier is detected to produce a video waveform which is then peak detected. This detector has a short time constant because the main AGC loop time constant is determined by the following circuit which is a comparator integrator with a time constant of 100 milliseconds. This time constant allows frame coggles on the input of the transposer to pass unaffected to the output. That is, they're neither improved nor made worse. But the long time constant means that for sudden changes in input level, the output power will take too long to stabilize. To overcome this problem, there are speed up circuits associated with the comparator integrator, which detect sudden changes of more than 5% and effectively reduce the time constant under these conditions. The output of the comparator integrator feeds a limiter circuit, which, depending on the gain setting of the maximum gain control, limits the transposer gain. There is no separate manual gain control. The power and gain controls are used in conjunction with the power normal LED, which indicates whether the AGC volts are in their normal range. With the power normal LED extinguished, the gain control acts as a manual gain control. The power control has no effect. If we increase the gain, when the condition is reached such that the transposer gain has to be limited for this same amount of output power, then the LED illuminates. In other words, the transposer is no longer in the manual gain condition, it is under the control of the AGC, but the AGC range available is indeterminate. When a transposer is installed, the power and AGC range need setting up. The analyzer has been calibrated with an accurate power meter on CW so that two watts corresponds to the top reference line. With normal input signal level, adjust the set power control to give this peak sync power. To set the AGC range, we must first put an attenuator of value equal to the required fade margin, normally 16 dBs, in the transposer input lead. Note that the LED is now extinguished. We need to increase the transposer gain with the gain control until the LED just illuminates again. With the attenuator removed, we now know that the transposer has exactly 16 dBs gain in hand. We've looked in some detail at the Silver Street units in the comfort of the lab. Now let's return to Hope under Dinmore, where Dave Yates and Ron Patterson are just arriving on site to carry out the performance checks. Well, we've come to Hope under Dinmore, David, to look at the typical site performance checks we'd carry out on the Silver Streak. Now, on a normal routine visit, we'd be required to check both the input and output of each service. The results obtained from these checks will then enable us to determine whether the equipment is radiating within the specified limits for this particular site. Oh, right. Now, unfortunately, David, because of the limited time available to us, we'll only be able to check the performance at the output of the transposer. Okay. okay. Well, I think the first thing we need is some test equipment. If I unpack the spectrum analyzer, perhaps you could grab a counter and some leads. Okay.
Is there anything else we need wrong? Um, yeah, you may as well bring that adapter kit oh, with us as well. Adapter's fine. Well, this is it, David. It's a typical four-channel silver streak installation. However, you'll notice there's an additional pre-amplifier on the input there. Yes, that's unusual. The field strength must be rather low on this side. Yeah, that's right. Would you like the counter now, Ron? Uh, yeah, I'll make sure I'll grab it now, David. OK. Right. I'll plug it in. At least it'll allow the oscillator to stabilise before we actually do any frequency yeah, checking. Well, before we actually do any measuring, Dave, it's worthwhile us looking at the monitoring provided. On each of the switch mode power supply units is an LED. When on, this indicates the presence of the regulated 28 volts DC output from this unit. Whilst the two LEDs on the front panel of each transposer provide indication of carrier locked and power normal. The carrier locked LED will indicate when the vision carrier at IF is locked to the internal 5 MHz oscillator, whilst the power normal LED is used to indicate that the output power is being controlled by the action of the automatic gain control circuit. The monochrome receiver provides a means of checking the received and transmit signals, in particular whether any pattern is visible. Before we actually do any measurements from the transposer, Dave, it's worthwhile us taking the necessary precautions not to overload the input of the analyzer. Yeah. As you know, Dave, at best this could produce unwanted intermodulation products, which we'll see on the display, and at worst down the input circuit of the analyzer. Right. So the first thing we want to do is turn the analyzer input attenuator for maximum attenuation, and all suitable measurements will be taken via a suitable coupler. Well, the first thing we'll do, Dave, is to compare the relative peak sync output power from each of the transposers. Right. There's the four output carriers. With the analyzer showing the four output channels, then we can see that the output from each of the transposers are at a similar level. In fact, using BBC1 as a reference, the BBC2 is one dB down on BBC1. Normally, David, we would measure the forward and reflected power on the output coupler, but unfortunately, in this installation, we don't have that facility. The response of the transposer can be checked by measuring the sound-to-vision ratio at the output. This is, of course, providing that the input signal ratio is within the specified limits. With the analyzer displaying the output channel for BBC One, and adjusted so that the sync tips of the video waveform coincide with the zero reference line, then the sound carrier is measured as 7 dBs down on peak sync output power. A check on the response of the transposer can be made at the mid-band frequencies by checking the chromance level with respect to peak sync power. The chromance signal is approximately 4.43 MHz above the vision carrier, and we'd expect the signal to be in the region of 17 dBs down on the vision carrier. With the zero reference line still corresponding to the peak sync output power, we can adjust the analyzer to display the chromium subcarrier component. This signal is measured as 17 dBs down on peak sync power. Another check we can do on the transposer is to measure the modulation depth of the vision carrier. A fault within the transposer could result in the distortion of the modulated envelope. Yes. If we center the vision carrier on the display, and adjust the analyzer controls so that the video signal can be displayed. And setting the analyzer to the linear display mode, and adjusting the fine gain control so that the video signal covers five divisions of the display, then each division will then correspond to 20% modulation of the camera.